hello guys welcome back to my channel and we've been we've been working on the um, math for the sat uh, practice text guide the official guide for 2021 to 2022 and um, we've walked through question 1 to 20 i broke down the questions on how to how to answer them um and today we're going to start from question 21 if you've not seen question 1 to 20, please go back to my previous video uh, and watch that uh, that video. It breaks down the previous question. So from question 21, it says, in the standard XY coordinate plane, what is the midpoint of the line segment that has endpoints minus 5, comma 8 and 3, comma minus 1? So, they asking us for the midpoint. Midpoint. And the formula for midpoint when you have two endpoints is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This is the formula for endpoint. So you're giving Two point two coordinate you have minus five a and you're also giving three comma minus one so this one becomes your x1 y1 and this one becomes your x2 y2 uh, y2 so now your midpoint will be equal to bracket your x1 is minus 5 plus your x2 is 3 divided by 2. Now, in, a, in an exam situation, you, <clears throat> you want to give yourself the opportunity to, uh, to quickly identify what the answer is. So, if you, if you work this out real quick, minus 5 plus 3 will give you minus 2 divided by 2. If you do the math, this will give you minus one. So in an exam situation, you don't have to solve everything, right? You can easily pick out what the answer is from the exam situation. And in this case, this is gonna be your answer because this is the only one that has minus one. But if you go ahead and solve the whole thing, y1 is eight, y2 is minus one. So minus one, divided by 2. If you expand this one, you will get 8 minus 1 divided by 2, right? And if you go further and expand that, you're going to get 7 divided by 2. So your coordinate here is minus 1, comma, 7 divided by 2. And that's where your answer is. So your answer is this one, B. So that's how you solve that. But if you're in the exam, you want to, you want to, you know, accumulate enough time that once you get your first answer, you quickly look at your your answer sheet to see which one looks like it. From there, you can know that this is the answer. You don't have to bother to solve everything. You can just pick your answer right away if if it's very unique, right? Let's go straight to um, the next question. It's gonna be question uh, twenty-two. So for question twenty-two. It says the ordered pairs x comma y in one of the following tables belong to a linear function. Which one? So the first thing you want to define is what is a linear function? Linear function means that x for this case and y are increasing or decreasing or x is increasing and y is decreasing 
proportionally. So what that really means is for every increase in x, y increase in the same proportion, or for every increase in x, y decreases in the same proportion, or uh, both of them decrease in the same proportion, or uh, they both increase in the same proportion. Um, linear in this case mean is going linear for example this is a linear for if I have a graph like this this is a linear graph okay that's a linear graph if, if something is going up if I have another graph like this it's already it's also a linear graph because it's proportional right if you have a graph like this it's a proportion also right it's linear so a linear graph is usually proportional right so in this case you have which means that if x is going up or down the, the y corresponding y must be proportional to that also so you see it is 0 1 2 3 which is, which is kind of linear right for f but here you have 1 and it went to 0 and it went to 1 and it went to 0 it is not proportion in relation to x right the next one x is going 0 1 2 3 which is linear but y is going 2 1 1 0 it's not proportional the next one is j you have j is going 0 1 2 3 which is proportional which is linear and this one is going 3 2 1 0 which is also linear so it's proportion right it's not jumping everywhere it's 3 2 1 0 0 1 2 3 this is good we have 0 1 0 1 which is not linear so x 0 1 2 3 0 1 4 9 is not you know this this there's a difference between this one different between this is three and from this is, is five so it's, it's not really proportional to that so this cannot be the answer so the only one that is the answer here is h so h is your answer in this case Let's go to question 23. In question 23, it says, in triangle ABC shown below, angle of A is equal to X, X uh, degree, angle of B is equal to 2X degree, angle of C is equal to 3X degree, AB is equal to C inches, AC is equal to B inches and BC is equal to A inches. Which of the following inequalities correctly relates the side lengths of triangle ABC? So that's what they're asking you. And this is a very simple, um, very simple question. In one of our rule, we say the, in, 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 this, in the sine rule, the larger the angle, okay, the larger the opposite side facing the angle so that's a statement right so what this means is take for example I have a triangle okay I'm gonna call this B I'm gonna call this A I'm gonna call this C in this triangle if this is 2 and this is 3 and this is 1 because this side this angle is the biggest number then if, if I call this X, I call this Y, and I call this Z, X is going to have the biggest, the longest length because it's facing the, the angle that has the larger um, angle, right? So definitely X is going to be the greatest because 3 is the greatest of all 2 because it's facing this one. Now, 2 is facing Z, or Z is facing 2. 2 is greater than 1. So in this triangle, Z 
is greater, right? Because for x is greater than z, and since this is y, y is great, great greater greatest. So in this case, great greater greatest, because three is greater than two, and two is greater than one. That because of that, x is going to be greater than z. And z is going to be greater than y. So in this case also, the same thing appears. C is going to be the greatest. So C is the greatest. Okay. And then B greater. And A in this case is going to be great. So what that means is A is less than B and B is less than C. So your answer is going to be A right here. So just remember that rule that any angle in a triangle, the larger the angle in that triangle, the side that is facing that angle will also be the greatest. Always. That's the rule of triangle. So let's go to question 24. Question 24. So question 24 says, what is the slope? Of the line that passes through 1,5 and 17,7 in the standard XY coordinate, XY coordinate plane. So, this one you just have to remember your formula that slope, when you have two coordinates like that, is Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus x1. So y2, again, we're going to use the same formula like we did the last time. This is going to be x1, y1, and it's going to be x2, y2. So we have 1,5, x1, y1, and we have 17,7, x2, y2. So all you gotta do now is plug in your numbers to solve this equation. So uh, y2 is seven, y1 is five minus five divided by x2 is 17 and x1 is one. So seven minus five is two, 17 minus one is 16. If you do the math, two here, one, to your eight, so your answer is one over eight. So the slope is one over eight f. Let's go to question twenty-five. Question twenty-five. So question twenty-five says the perimeter of a particular rectangle is thirty-six centimeter. The longer sides of the rectangle are each two centimeters longer than each of the shorter sides of the rectangle. What is the length in centimeters of one of the longer sides of this rectangle? So let's quickly solve this by, by drawing a rectangle. So it's a rectangle. The rule of rectangle is that this side is equal to this side, and this side is also equal to this side. Opposite sides are equal. That's what the rules of a rectangle. So if you have A here, it means that this is going to be A. If you have B here, it means that this side is going to be A. Also, the perimeter of a rectangle is the addition of all sides of that rectangle. For example, to solve this question, they said the perimeter of a rectangle is 36 centimeters. So in that case, if I had an other side, which is A plus B plus A plus B is equal to 36 centimeters, right? Well, I have two A's and I have two B's. So I can easily simplify this by saying A plus A is 2A plus B plus B is 2B is equal to 36 centimeters. So you can see that 2 is common to all of them. So you can take the 2 out. 2 
factorization. A plus B is equal to 36, right? So divide both sides by 2, so you can eliminate these two right here. If you do that, divide this side by 2, and divide this side by 2, so you have 2 is eliminated here, and the 2 here gives you 18. So A plus B is equal to 18. Let's call that, let's call that equation 1, okay? Because we need to solve this. We're also given another information. It says that the longer sides of the rectangle are each two centimeters longer than each of the shorter sides. So what it's saying is that this side is longer than this by two. So that means A is equal to what? B plus two. Because it says the longer side here is greater by is greater than two. That, so it's greater than the shorter side by two uh, centimeters. So you have a plus b uh, is equal, uh, sorry a equals b plus two. So that's that is what it's saying, right? So that that is what that means. Well, that makes your life a lot easier because you can call this equation two. So let's put equation two into equation one. What that means is anywhere you see a substitute b plus 2 in there so in this case instead of writing a plus b we write your instead of a we we'll write b plus 2 so b plus 2 right plus b is equal to what 18 so open this up you have b plus 2 plus b is equal to 18 that's what it means right if you expand the bracket so now you have b plus b is 2b, right? So you have 2b plus 2 is equal to 18, correct? Right? So 2b is equal to 18. Take this number to the other side. Your sign is going to change. Anytime you move something across the equal sign, the sign is going to change so this is going to become negative so you have plus 2 is equal to 18 so you have 18 minus 2 and that gives you 16 so you have 2b is equal to what uh, 16 that means your b if you divide both sides by 2 your b is, is going to be equal to what 8 so your b is 8 so that means that this place right here is 8. This is 8 here. But well, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the longer side because it says what is the length in centimeters of one of the longer sides? The long, which is the A side, is the longer side. So we know that A is equal to a B plus 2, correct? Right? So A, which is the longer side, is equal to B is 8. So that will be 8 plus 2. And that is 10. So the longer side, which is A, is 10. This is going to be 10 also. And this right here is 8. And this is also 8. So that's how you solve that question. And if you do the math, you see that 10 plus 10 is 20. 8 plus 8 is 16. 20 plus 16 is 36. So that's correct. So anyway, our A, which is longer side, is 10, and that'll be option C. So that is how you solve that question. Let's go to question 26. So in this question, we're solving um, question 26 to 28. So it's a, it's a two-part question, it's a three-part question. The first one says, Winter Fun Ski Resort sells only two types of tickets adult and student. On Monday, the resort sold 200 tickets, one ticket to each skier. Of those tickets, 25 were sold to first-time skiers. When Alisa skis, the results may run, may, may, when, when, when Alisa skis, the results may run, our elevation E is equal to 3000 divided by T plus 100. Where T is the number of seconds after she begins skiing 
at the start of the main run. Now, question 26 says the result collected a total of $6,000 in, in ticket sales on Monday. The price of an adult is $50 and the price of a student is $25. How many adult and student tickets were sold on Monday? That is the question. So let's solve this question real quick. So um, for question 26, it says the result collected a total of 6000 in ticket sales on Monday. The price of an adult is $50 and the price of a student is $25. How many adult and student tickets were sold on Mondays? On Monday. So let's let's say let x equal um, amount of adult tickets so and then let y equals amount of students tickets so right let's do that so if they sold in that case, if they sold X um, tickets, which is fifty dollar per ticket, so you have fifty dollars, and they sold Y amount of ticket, which is twenty five dollars, right? Everything is going to be six thousand dollars for that day. For that Monday, right? So they sold X number of tickets. If you times that by 50 plus Y number of tickets, if you times that by 25, you get the total value that is sold for, for that Monday, which is 6,000. So if you expand this bracket, you have 50X, right? Plus 25Y is equal to $6,000. Right, this is in dollars now. So, if you divide or if you take if you take the if you take the, uh, the common donation here, which is twenty five from six thousand, you get expand. You um, simplify this. You have twenty five. So you have two x plus y is equal to. Uh, you take this one out twenty five also. 25 and 6,000 should give you, uh, that should give you 25 and 6,000, hmm, 240, 240, I think, 240. So, cancel 25, you get 2x plus y is equal to 240. Let's call this equation 1, okay? Let's call that equation one. So, um, the results sold 200 tickets, right? So, we're, go we're going to do that real quick. X plus Y will give you 200. So, uh, what can I take off? Uh, let me take this off. So, the results on Monday the results sold 200 tickets. So let's assume that they sold X plus Y tickets and that was 200, right? Equation two. So we have two equations. We have X plus Y equal 200 and we have two X plus Y equal 240. That's what we have right there, right? So we get that. We don't have much we don't know that they sold 200 tickets. We don't know how much of X and how much of Y they sold, but we know that they sold both X and Y and everything together is 200. So now that you have two equations with just two variables, X plus Y variables, now you can now combine these two equations. So to do that, you have X plus Y is equal to 200 and you also have two X plus Y is equal to 240. 
So in that case, you can minus the, this from this, right? So you can say 2x minus x, uh, which is very easy. You can say you can minus, so that, that will eliminate one variable. So 2x minus x plus, sorry, 2x minus x plus y minus x is equal to 240 minus 200. If you do the math, you see that 2x minus x is x, and y minus y is 0, is equal to 240 minus 200 is 40. So your x is equal to 40. If x is equal to 40, that means that y, which is, if you go from equation 2, x plus y is equal to 200. Plug in your x equal 40, that will be 40 plus y is equal to 200. And that means, therefore, your y is going to be what? 200 minus 40, and your y is going to be 160. So what that means is that x is equal to 40, and y is equal to 160. So amount of adult tickets sold for this question is going to be 40, and the amount of student tickets sold is going to be 160. So that's how you answer that question. Uh, and that'll be uh, for that. Now the next question, question 27, says that, question 27, let's go to, let's go to question 27. So in this question on to, number 27, on Monday the resort sold one ticket to each of the eight members of the Azot family. Assume this family is a, is a representative sample of all the skiers at the resort on Monday. How many of the eight members of the Azot family are not first time skiers? Very, very simple. So they're saying that assume that this small sample right here, this eight sample of eight is representative of this big one. We were told that 25 was sold to to uh, first time skiers, right? So you have 200 tickets that were sold. 200 tickets were sold on Monday. Out of that 200, only 25 tickets sold to first time skiers. So that tells you something. What is the ratio of the the, uh, the, the first time skiers to the uh, to everybody else? That, uh, that they sell the ticket to. That's what they're saying. So in this case, you, you can say 25 of 200 of the population right? 25% of the population are first time first time skiers are first time skiers Twenty-five percent, twenty-five of the two hundred are first-time skiers. So you can you can simplify these by saying, uh, let me see, oh, one. That will be is that eight? That is eight, right? So one eight, one eighth of the whole population are first-time skiers. One eighth of the whole population are first are uh, first-time skiers. So. How much of the population are not first-time skiers in this case? We know that one eight of the whole population is, is a first-time skier because they bought the tickets. So that means one minus one eight uh, is the population of not first-time uh, skiers. In this case, you're gonna have eight minus one divided by eight, and that is seven divided by eight. So we know that one eight are first-time skiers, and seven eight. Are not are not first time skiers. So this question is saying that what is the population of the eight members of the family of the other family 
that are not first time skiers. So we know seven A of eight members are not for are not first time skiers. So in that case, seven A times A is equal to way NYC of is multiplication. So 7a of 8 is equal to 7. So in the options that we're given, your answer is going to be 7. That is question 27. Let's go to question 28. So question 28 says, what is Alisa's elevation in feet at the start of the main run? So they will give us the equation for that. The equation says E is equal to 3,000. 3, over t plus 100 at the start of the main run which so at the start of the main run what that means that at the start of the move is to say what is alisa's elevation in feet at the start of the main run at the start of the main run t is going to be equal to zero right so plug that zero in here look that will give you e is equal to thirty thousand divided by zero plus 100 and that means that is 30,000 0 plus 100 is 0 divide this and that gives you that E is equal to 300 so that is the elevation the elevation is 300 so that's how you solve question 26 28 if you have the book um, if, if you have this book let's go to question 29 so the question says on one one side of a square ABCD has a length of 18 meters, a certain rectangle whose area is equal to the area of ABCD has a width of six meters. What is the length in meters of a certain rectangle? So let's draw a square. A square has four equal sides. All sides are equal. So if this is 18, this is going to be 18, 18. 18. Area of a square of square is equal to what? Length times breadth, right? Length times breadth. So which is equal to in this case 18 times 18. That's the area of a square. It's going to be a meter squared. And then we also have a rectangle. In a rectangle, opposite sides are equal, right? So they say one side, one has a width, this is the width right here, uh, is what? Six meters, so this is six. We don't know what this is, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it X. But I know this is six, and I know this is gonna be six also, so. This is gonna be six. This is gonna be equal to this, so it's gonna be X also. So we know that. So area of, area of, uh, of a rectangle, area of rectangle is also length times width right length times width so in that case 6 times x meter square right so they said the area it says it's a rectangle whose area is equal to the area of the square so this area is equal to this that means the area of the rectangle which is 6x is equal to the area of a, of a square, which is 18 times 18, right? So if you do the math, we're looking for this right here. They say, what is the length in meters of a certain rectangle? That's what they're looking for, this length right here. So we're looking for x. So divide both sides by 6, so we can eliminate this 6 beside the x. If you do that, the x is going to be standing alone, and 6 divided by 18 is 3. So your x is equal to 18 times 3. And if you do the math, that gives you 3 times 8 is 24, right? 4 for your 2. 3 times 2 is 3 plus 2, that's 5. So 54. That means this x right here is 54. And that's the length we're looking for. And that's option E. Option E. Let's go to question 30. 
question 30. So 25, uh, uh, question 30 says the two by two matrix A and B below are related to the matrix C by the equation C is equal to two A minus three B. What is matrix C? And they gave us A is this and B is that. So first you want to do is solve two A. So two A is going to be two A is going to be equal to two. And what is A? A is three. 5, which is the matrix, minus 2, 1. So if you solve that, which means we're going to times 2, you're going to, you're going to multiply 2 with everything inside this matrix. So 2 times 3, open the matrix, you're going to have 6. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. 2 times 1 is 2. So that is that is 2A. Now let's work out uh, uh, 3b so 3b is equal to 3 times b what is b b is minus 4 5 2 1 so let's do that 3 times minus 4 is minus 12 minus 12 3 times 5 is 15 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 1 is 3 so now let's do the math. C is equal to 2A is this, right? So you get, you get 6, 10, minus 4, 2, minus 3B is this. So you get minus 12, 15, 6, 3. So let, now let's do the math. 6 minus, minus 12. 6 minus, so you have 6 minus, minus 12. That will be same thing as 6 plus, minus times minus is going to be plus 12. So that's 18. 18. If I'm in my exam, I'm going to stop right there. And when I'm going to look for the answers that start with 18, this one, F. So I know this is going to be my final answer here, but this is the only one that has. 18 standing with someone I know it's already F. Well, let's finish. Let's finish it up. Uh, 10 minus 15 is minus 5. So you have minus 5 right here. And you can see it's correlating, right? You have minus 4, minus 6, minus 4, minus 6, right? I'll give you minus 10 right there. So you have minus 10. And then you also have 2 minus 3 that give you minus 1 so this will be minus 1 so your option is going to be 18 minus 5 minus 10 minus 1 so we know we're right so your option is option f in the exam like i said you want to spend less time to get your results so once you get that first point look at your options and see which one looks more like what you're looking for and then just choose it don't worry about solving the whole thing because you already know that is your answer. Choose the answer and move forward. If you like this video, if I told you something today, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also if you think your friends might benefit from this video, you can share this video with them so they can also learn and get prepared for the ACT. Uh, the next video that will be coming up will be uh, 31 question 31 to 40 and i hope uh, you're going to enjoy it thank you again for watching my video i appreciate it and have a great day bye, -bye.